Rings of Power was a total failure. Absolute. Everyone knows it, including the studio. Everyone except for Variety. And they put out an article asking Prime why they're not popping champagne talking about their ratings. When the reality is the fans' message that was sent loud and clear sent Amazon's lackeys packing back to their corporate hidey holes. You corrupt Tolkien. You mess with what we love. There's going to be a price to pay. And the good old days where you could cancel your audience and then recast it with another just because they criticize your series. Those days are over. Done. Hollywood doesn't cancel us anymore. We cancel you. Rings' is failure is proof. Twenty-one plus money-grubbing producers, two half-wit showrunners from the school of Huey Bowles blood rain, three directors who probably masturbate to Captain Marvel on a daily basis. Is that like a personal attack or something? Seven screenwriters who stuttered gender theory and who cheerlead for pronouns all tied together with a cast of failing actors who couldn't convince a man dying of thirst in the desert to accept a glass of water from him. But hey, on the bright side, the entire cast looks like they have a bright future as SM porn stars. That's rings in a nutshell. Welcome, Slayer Nation. Wow, I had to get that off my chest. Rings of Recycled Fantasy is a shoddy, second-rate Renaissance Fair performance made for the recently lobotomized and deceased. Prime had the balls to try to put out a production that had no talent and they could paper it over with money, and we were supposed to cheer it on. And Variety asks, what? What's the deal with the silence? Because, because they, they failed. failed. Now, Prime tried to actually con Andy Serkis into the grift. Yeah, I absolutely watched it. And it really, once you get through it, understanding the rules of it, and actually how loyal to the trilogy and the feel of the trilogy music by Howard Shore for the opening sequence, etc. I found it incredibly engaging. And I really, really enjoyed watching it. Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah, that was Serkis telling Collider that he liked Rings of Power, and that was about as believable as Jeff Bezos on stage. My kids have become Tolkien fans as well. In fact, one of my boys, I think, approaches the level of a Tolkien scholar. And after Amazon got involved in this project, uh, my son came up to me one day. He looked me in the eyes very sincerely. And he said, Dad, please don't have this up. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. You just summed up the series better than I ever could have. A middle-aged man in a midlife crisis on stage at the London premiere with his billion-dollar dream project, retelling a story about his son, who he heralds as a Tolkien scholar who he's now let down, who's probably disowned him, that you have to read a prepared speech from your cell phone just to hit all your marks. Did I miss anything? Did I skip anything at all? Because that's what everyone should expect from one of Amazon's fantasy series. Wheel of Time, anyone? Now Rings of Power. Amazon's silence on the Rings of Power audience size is deafening. Of course it is. Prime has been peeing down our backs for months and saying that it's raining. They've been telling the world, look at this bona fide mega hit that we're making, the world's greatest fantasy epic. Don't believe your lying eyes, believe our reality. Then why are they replacing the showrunners in season two? Legendary film critic Chris Gore just recently told Midnight's Edge the same thing. I heard from someone who has a connected Amazon that effectively what they're they're going to be retooling and that the guys who are the showrunners, they're not going to be publicly fired, but their role will be reduced, potentially just remaining in the writer's room. But my understanding is they're looking for more experienced showrunners. And what they're doing behind the scenes is they're they're freaking out that this was more of a failure than could have been anticipated. So now the showrunners are out for season two. They've, of course, been sidelined in that Hollywood style. That's the way that Hollywood people hedge their bets. You know, today they're failing, but sometime in the future they might succeed. So they want to be on their good side to say, hey, I gave you a break. And I found out that the season two scripts are in rewrites. And here I thought that J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay had the entire show all wrapped up in the bag. Isn't that what they told us in June? We even know what our final shot of the last episode is going to be, paying teases to Empire and our world-exclusive cover story. Well, it seems like the Bobsy twins have a little performance anxiety. You know, guys, you're in Hollywood. They probably make a pill for that. Or is it the fact that you all are just using Tolkien to springboard your career and seal a few more contracts, like D&D &D did after six seasons on Game of Thrones? 
There's only one difference. While you're out there right now preparing your pre-production for your, what is it, your cannibal action thriller caper movie called Escape. See, D&D had six seasons of a global phenomenon, a certified hit. You have none. But I kind of feel sorry for you guys. Because the reality is you don't have anyone in your camp that loves you, truly cares about you to pull you aside, sit you down and say, okay, Y'all tried for 10 years in cinema. You failed. You gave it a gold collar try. You didn't make it. Now, one season in television, you're done. Go get a day job. Would you like to try our new beef and cheese pot pie on a stick? Just $1.99 for a limited time only. The Rings of Power is, in theory, among Amazon Prime Video's most watched original series ever. I kind of like that. That's funny. That's some of Variety's like subliminal seeding there. It's a way the Brown knows their pain masters while shiving them a little bit. It's the same way She-Hulk probably believes in theories their producers that they've produced the greatest show in MCU's history since the Endgame. It's just too funny. So why is the tech giant being so cagey about its viewership? Well, that's because Prime produced crap. And then they got their butt kicked by a blind one-legged man at an ass-kicking contest. Shall we go over some of the cast again? You got Uber Elf Galadriel, the Lord of the Cairns, who dragged the audience along for the first seven hours as she told every single character, beware of Sauron. Where do I find Sauron? I want to kill Sauron, only to find out in the finale that she was with Sauron the entire time and then lied to everybody she supposedly cares about. And then the girl boss gang, they were all one-noted, flat, and dull. And the men, let's talk about the men. They were dropped in as walking idiots, stand-ins for like a blow-up doll that had a kick-me sign taped across their back. Again, what's not to love? In the course of the fantasy series, entire six weeks run, Amazon released just one figure quantifying its performance, claiming the first two episodes were streamed by 25 million global viewers in the first 24 hours of availability. Of course, it's what they're going to say. What else were they going to do? They wanted to puff up their chest. They wanted to pamper their pride a little bit. But I think in some ways, they also wanted to bully the dragon a bit back into their cave. They wanted to play the Game of Thrones and take the crown from HBO. But see, all the PR and marketing sizzle in the world cannot change the reality about Rings that it is lipstick on an anorexic pig. Still, Rings has performed very well by Nielsen's metrics, delivering some of the biggest weekly viewership numbers ever for a prime video series though it hasn't reached the peaks of Reacher and the Terminal List. I don't care how they spin it. Judged by any metric, Reacher, which is made for an estimated budget between 33 and $55 million, and Terminal List, starring Chris Pat, made for upwards of $70 million, whipped rings like a rented mule. They treated that show like Kevin Feige treats Marvel fans. It failed. HBO, for its part, hasn't been shy about the high-flying viewership of Dragons. According to the network, the series has averaged 29 million viewers per episode in the U.S., across linear and digital platforms, close behind the average audience for the penultimate season of Game of Thrones, 32.8 million viewers per episode in the U.S. That makes perfect sense, Variety. HBO is a winner. They want to trumpet their triumphs. They got nothing to hide. They're not like Rings, which in the Nas Nielsen ratings came in fourth right behind Dragons. See, think of it like a horror movie. They use silence to build up tension because that will send your imagination reeling, thinking about what's going to reach for you in the dark. When Prime puckers up and goes quiet, you know it's time for their pacifier and a nap. Well, now that rings is over, I have a few things to get off my chest. In my most humble manner possible, I was absolutely right. We spent months listening to the peanut gallery of shills tell us, do not judge a series before you watch it. And they were absolutely wrong. That's what you're going to do when you have critical thinking and reasoning abilities. You watch the trailers, you look at the teasers and clips, read the articles, and hear what the cast has to say to determine if it's worth your time. And if you had joined me on that journey over the last few months, you would have already known that Galadriel's husband, Celeborn, was zeroed out of the equation, just like her daughter, Calabrian. You would have already known that Hallbrand was sauerkraut and that one of the hobo Harfoots, played by Lenny Henry, he would die. But the other thing that you learned not only was that Tom Shippey was fired because he couldn't put up with them poisoning the lore, was that you got to watch some of the audition videos from the cast and hear the screenwriter's talent. And we all learned together that the dialogue sounded like a Brie Larson YouTube video. A new look, a new vibe, a new energy into this space. What's truly tragic is all the showrunners had to do in order to bring the second age to life with what they own, the rights that they had, is they had to follow J.R.R. Tolkien's guidance for the second age that he shared in letter 131 to Milton Waldman. Three main themes are thus, the delaying elves that lingered in Middle-earth, Sauron's growth to a new Dark Lord, master and god of men, and Numenor Atlantis, 
They are dealt with analytically, and in two tales or accounts, The Rings of Power and the Downfall of Numenor. You cannot pervert Tolkien and then try to solve your misunderstanding of his mythological masterpiece by just throwing money on it and using cheap tricks like mystery box theater. It doesn't work. But the most important things in life at the end of the day are to be authentic, true to yourself, true to what you love and those you care about. So get out there, lead by example, and let them hear you roar. We never bow down. We never bend the knee. We never backtrack on our beliefs. Always forward.